Hi there, and welcome back to this workshop about Suzanne Chiani's Book Like a Book in VCB Rack. We have built our performance patch, and the technical aspect is now behind us. It is time to explore the different playing techniques of the cookbook. We will use our performance patch as an existing landscape. If you are mostly interested in playing techniques, then feel free to start from here and download the patch as it is. Come back to the previous episodes for more technical informations. All the patches can be heard performed by Suzanne Chiani in the 1975 concert at BWAI Free Music Store recently released as the Bookla Concerts by Finders Keepers Records and is available in most platforms. The timecode of each patch is available in the description. Before we get into the patches, I think it would be useful to get familiar with an unusual technique that will come back very often and it's worth having a closer look to understand how powerful it is. These days, most of the modular composers are used to probability gates and random play mode in their sequencer. There was no such thing in 1976, but there was a way to patch it by yourself. And as always, it comes with a lot of flexibility. Instead of using the random mode of your sequencer, you can address the steps with a random voltage. Of course, this voltage should be sampled by what was the clock of your sequencer to happen within the rhythm. The result might be the same as a random play mode, but this technique offers so much more, as you can attenuate and offset your signal to explore your sequence and find some sweet spots of randomness. In the same fashion, you can use a sequencer as a probability gate by addressing the steps with a random signal. Setting some steps high will define the probability for the gate to be open. The following example offers a probability of 1 over 8 to be open, which is 12.5%. Setting 4 steps high will set the probability to 50%. You can also play with the random signal to make it more alive. By editing the value of each step, you can define a sublevel of probability such as accent. This method is an important part of the creative process proposed by Suzanne Chiani in her cookbook, as we will see in the following patches. The first patch of the cookbook is called Rhythmic Relief or Prism Melody. This technique creates an oral illusion around a repetitive 16 steps sequence by building a larger rhythmic unit with the timbral and register modulation. Before we start, let's have a quick reminder of our routing. This is a two voice patch. The ground control will be our homemade 248 that receives the four rows of sequences. The 248 has two playheads. We will call them AFG1 and AFG2. Each of them has two rows of CV outputs controlled by the two sequencers. We will call them row A and row B. Each playhead controls an oscillator with row A controlling the pitch and row B controlling the wave shape. In this setting, 
A, F, G, 1 and 2 have their row A set to external, so the knobs act as a sequential switch to send one of the four sequences. The oscillators are sent to the bandpass filters and the low pass gates. We will have a complete episode about specialization, but for this first patch, Suzanne Chiani describes a subtle special modulation driven by the source of uncertainty. We must drive it with our main clock, so the random events will happen within the rhythm and therefore become musical events. The first voice is extremely simple. We won't drive the AFG1. It will stay on the first stage. We will set the pitch to the first sequence and the wave shape to our taste. The second voice will be set to the second sequence. So we must offset the AFG2 by one stage and set it to the second sequence. We will do the same for all the other stages of row A because we are going to travel around the stages and we don't want the pitch to be affected. This way, we can go through all the stages without disturbing the sequence. The row B and its wave shaper control is what we are interested in. It is time to drive the AFG2 with the source of uncertainty. As we have seen in the previous example, what we are doing here is setting a probability for the wave shape to change. More high stages mean a higher probability. We can also affect the octave switches to add another layer of oral illusion. So here it is, the prism melody patch. On a 16 step sequence, we are revealing an infinite number of nested melodies by modulating the time and register of the oscillators. If you want to reproduce the opening section of Mrs. Chiani's modern performances, you can lock the sequence to the first two steps and then later go to 16. The next patch is called Vertical Sequencer. It involves the same signal path but with a different mindset. In the previous patch, we have considered our four rows as 16 step sequencer, and the 248 is used to alter the sequence. For this new patch, we will consider a single step of our sequencer as four notes of an arpeggio and its structure will be defined by the 248. Think of it as a four-string guitar, 
with the 248 as the right hand picking different notes on a chord and the sequencer as the left hand playing 16 different chords. First we need to set the sequencer to focus on a single step. The first step is C on every note, so we are going to focus on the second step, which is A sharp, C, G and C. Let's start with a single voice on the A, F, G, 1. We can choose which note we want to listen with the row A knob. We can also add an octave switch. We can choose different notes and octaves for each stage of the 248 and addressing them will create an arpeggio. I will program the exact example of the cookbook but it goes without saying that it should be adjusted to your personal taste. In this patch, the main clock is not driving the sequencer, but the 248 with a ramp sync to the main clock. It acts like a classic 16 steps sequencer. This is the structure of our arpeggio. Now we need to advance our sequencer to access the next chord. It is done by programming a pulse on the last step of the 248 and using it as a clock for the sequencer. We can also add our second voice To bring even more richness to the song we can have our second voice one step ahead by offsetting the ramp of the AFG2 So here it is, the vertical sequencer patch. Just by changing two cables, we have turned a four channel sequencer into a chord generator. We haven't changed a single note of the sequence and yet we have a completely different result. Once again, it's impressive to see how well these four rows of sequence are composed. They work both as parallel melodies and as the note of a chord progression. Thank you for watching up to there. I'll be happy to have you back in the next episode. Meanwhile, you will find many useful things in the description, including the VCV patch, 
the link to the cookbook, some interesting lectures of Suzanne Ciani, the modular grid link to her former and current setup. Don't hesitate to subscribe for the next episode and share it if you know someone who might be interested in this. See you on the next episode.